Jim, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering about that, but I don't really want to know. All will become clear in time. Have you heard yep. about your own Okay, so. Well, nice time. Pants night, so. All right. Uh, so, this is uh, from uh, my blog. Some of you have read the blog, some of you may have not, but uh, I've been. <laughs> lately, rather irregularly, cataloging uh, my my uh, trip through the wonderful world of stage four colon cancer and uh, reclaiming my life uh, as things are stabilizing. And uh, this is actually I did a five part uh, kind of travel log on last year's Joko cruise, and so this is. Uh, the fifth part. The time I went back to boat, part five. Joko Cruz and the Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> there was a it, preface, there was a little gap between part four and part five in the timeline uh, of when the post went up. <laughs> wow. Been a little bit since the time I went back to boat, part four. Mockingjay, part two. <laughs> I've been a little busy and pushing myself a little in my ongoing quest to get the stamina built back up to able to work full time and it's well tiring leaving me without sufficient brain spoons ah dessert <laughs> chilled monkey brains uh, to write good or enough to do a post making myself do it today to get to the actual to get the actual trip report finished so I can get on with other stuff that should also be talked about which I didn't do um, <laughs> We left off with us back on shore, landed at one of the Joke Hotels to hang out with friends, the traditional Joko Cruise afterglow, until our flight, and we regained connectivity to the interwebs. The tubes that run out to sea are very expensive space tubes, and not only are they very expensive, they're very small tubes because they go to space and back, and be flexible because the ships move around. <laughs> Note that I'm writing this for a primary audience of not sea monkeys, so... Uh, whereupon I discovered that our non-stop flight home that evening had been cancelled due to the grounding of all Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Note here, if the people at Boeing, and I'm including the management that signed off on doing it this way, and the people at the FAA who also signed off on doing this, it this way, aren't criminally charged regarding the deaths their fuck-up caused, they should at the very least be drummed out of the engineering and engineering management business so hard they might as well move to Key West and open up a t-shirt shop two blocks away from Duval Street on an alley that no one sober ever goes down. <laughs> Did I mention I'm an engineer for a living? <laughs> uh, the email notification on this was sent on Thursday. Of course. The day we went back to sea and weren't connected as we were in San Juan, which, being a U.S. territory, has native cell phone coverage. No roaming! And we got a second email saying that we'd been automatically rebooked on a flight leaving Fort Lauderdale at 6 a.m. <laughs> and connecting tightly through Atlanta. That's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, two and a half days after we were supposed to fly out. Did I mention that we were in Fort Lauderdale? And it was spring break. <laughs> and because of those key, two key facts, there weren't any non-shithole hotel rooms to be found at all. I'm pretty sure the shithole hotel rooms were pretty scarce too. So I got on the phone with Southwest. Not their fault that Boeing fucked up, but they're the ones who needed to reschedule us. Naturally, there was a wait, so I used their we'll call you back when it's your turn feature and started researching hotels and also one-way rental car options while I waited for the call back. So when they called, first person speaking is the Southwest agent. I see you've been rebooked on a flight Tuesday morning. Yes. Are you going to find us a hotel stay for three nights? In Fort Lauderdale? During spring break? <laughs> Rent us a car? There are 173 people in a similar situation. Yes, we're two of them. <laughs> two of our friends are two more of them. None of us have hotel rooms reserved because we've been planning to fly on, on we've been planning on flying out this evening. Let me see if I can get you out sooner. 
good idea. The clicking of keys in the background. Okay, I can get you on a flight out of West Palm Beach on Monday morning, connecting through Memphis, Nashville, Orlando, somewhere. I stopped paying attention after Monday morning. Are you going to get us a hotel for two nights and cover the $200 cab ride to West Palm Beach? <laughs> Sir, there are 173 people who were booked on the flight that was canceled and we can't... Right! Well, you should have thought of that before canceling a full flight out of a spring break destination during spring break, yes? <laughs> Anything tomorrow? Which would have been Sunday. Both of us are due back at work on Monday morning. We're booked, we, we booked Saturday so we'd have a chance to get home and be ready to go by Monday. No, everything on Sunday is already full. Right, because spring break. Okay, so let's just cancel this. I'm going to rent a car and drive 1,300 miles and still get home before you guys can get us there. Which is how I wound up with nearly $600 in credit with Southwest. We'll likely use it this summer. We did. <laughs> I also hadn't planned on testing my long road trip chops quite so soon. I hadn't done one since before diagnosis. But no time like the present, I guess. Plus, I was still rather buoyed by how well Boat had gone and was feeling just just drank Egg Shin's potion confident. <laughs> Folks, that's a good feeling. And I still had a lot of spare poop bags, just in case. <laughs> Back at the, to the National Car Rental site, because I have an Emerald Club membership with them, and for reasons known only to them, they still think I work for a former employer and get the contract rate. Nice. <laughs> I've tried to tell them I don't work there anymore, but they persist in saying I still do, so what else? Plug in the pickup and return locations, dates, times, and the default is a mid-size Hyundai Elantra, or equivalent. How a C-class, a C-category compact car classifies as mid-size is left as an exercise for the reader. Regardless, for that kind of drive, an Elantra is a hair shirt. <laughs> Not quite as itchy, of one as a Nissan Versa, but close. Hmm, what other categories are available? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, here we go. Luxury, Cadillac, XTS, or equivalent. And only $30 more. <laughs> yes, please. Booked. Uh, side note, because of reasons, I will never, ever buy a new GM vehicle ever for the rest of my life. They're making some decent cars. And I've had said decent cars as rentals, but I won't buy one. So tell Kim and friends what's going on. Then go get a cab summoned to cart me to the airport to go get the car. They don't have any luxury cars in the Emerald Isle area when I get there, so the attendant summons one, leaving me to look at the black BMW 7 Series sedan sitting there. Evil thoughts crept into my mind. <laughs> I have a 1,300-mile road trip ahead of me. Nothing says bored for a long highway run like a big German sedan. <laughs> I wonder if I can't, and then someone brought up the Cadillac XT5, which is kind of a cute ute that I'd been assigned, and I didn't get to ask anyone about the possibilities of switching to the Siebener. No matter, the XT5 had the, all has most of the mod cons, heated and cooled seats, nav, lane keeping, collision warning with brake assist, Bluetooth so I don't have to buy the extra cost serious SIM service so I can just connect to the phone and use the app since I'm already a subscriber. The only thing it lacked was adaptive cruise control, which it turns out I'd miss the next day. <laughs> and it was a nice nondescript silver for blending in, important as I hadn't planned on driving and just brought, hadn't brought any of my electronic countermeasures suite with me. <laughs> Checked out back to the hotel, texted Kim, and William Summers helped us schlep the luggage out of storage and into the back of the cat, cat ute. Well, it would have been nice to hang out for the day at the hotel, hitting the road was necessary, so we did. And after a quick lunch stop, we were on the road. The world's sketchiest Wendy's was our quick, quick lunch stop, but, you know, that's another story. Uh, turns out the Shelleys who were in the same predicament, had also rented a car and were slightly ahead of us on the road after taking a more direct route to the Florida Turnpike. We could leapfrog them with stops, but we did not ever see them on the road. The drive the first day was relatively tame. I was able to stream IMSA radio to the car and thus got to listen to the 12 hours of Sebring while I drove relatively close to the actual Sebring. 
where many of my Marshall friends had pulled the epic triple with the Michelin Challenge and the WC races the day before, and some had worked the St. Perrysburg Gimme Car race the weekend before. They were tired. The XT5 was a comfortable ride, better seats than either the Fort Lauderdale airport or the airplane. So, no screaming children, and it cruised along at a respectable pace. I wouldn't have made much better time in the BMW because traffic. We stopped for dinner just before making the turn on I-10 West, lamenting that we'd not be able to hit Flou Flounder's Chowder House in Pensacola Beach, or because of timings, Parane in Baton Rouge the next day, but maybe next time. I was hoping to hit Biloxi slash Gulfport, Mississippi for our overnight, so Kim started hunting hotels, and there was nothing. She got a hit on the western edge of Pensacola, and then nothing until the other side of Slidell, Louisiana, which was a bit yeah. too far to push that night. Right. We'll just have a night. And thus did we crash out for the night just west of Pensacola. Up the next morning, make breakfast, fuel up, and hit it. And the degree of road fuckery we encountered that day was breathtaking. <laughs> By my estimation, we lost something more than two and a half hours to road fuckery. There were numerous crashes on I-10, which is almost completely straight and level. It runs from Jacksonville, Florida to Los Angeles, California, and there aren't any stoplights on it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but some folks seem to think there's one over every overpass or small ridge they can't see over, hit the brakes, and set up accordions, which breed crashes. In addition to the normal road warriors, there were a lot of spring break amateur road, uh, warrior wannabes out, and no small fuel rental cars, probably people doing what we were doing, trying to get home to be at work or school on Monday. Spent enough time on the big road, and you can tell the pros from the amateurs pretty easily. This was definitely amateur day. I expect the slowdowns in Mobile as it funnels into the tunnel over Mobile Bay. I expect the slowdowns in Baton Rouge where it funnels over onto the bridge over the Mississippi. I expect the slowdowns on the, this is a Cajun word I can't say, Atchafalaya Basin Bridge between Close Baton, enough. what? Close enough. Yeah, we're, I'll just run with it. If you're familiar with it, you know it's a horror show. Yes. <laughs> between Baton Rouge and Lafayette, because there always are. I expect the slowdowns in the run up to the big bridge in Lake Charles. I expect the slowdowns close to Houston, where one lane of the bridge over the San Jacinto River is closed after a barge ran into the pilings. Give it your hour effort. <laughs> the best part is they got the bridge open, it was open for a couple months, and then another barge broke loose and ran into it and closed it again. <laughs> it just reopened, I think, about three weeks ago. What I didn't expect was crashes well away from all those sites. There was one just over the Sabine River in the Texas we never actually saw because the backup was, al was almost all the way to Lake Charles, which is 20 plus miles. This is where the adaptive cruise with station keeping would have been really nice. There was a construction area in Beaumont that had at least three wrecks in it. We were able to bypass around most of it. We got to the national return lane at H Hobby Airport a couple hours later than planned. When the attendant went out to check, check us in, the bill came to a lot more than I thought it would be. It seems they wanted to charge me 30 cents a mile for the 1,188 miles I'd driven, which wasn't on the rental agreement. So off to the building to wait for the right person to fix that, which they did. I had the rental agreement on my phone as proof there wasn't any mileage charge listed. Then our friend Harris gave us a lift home and we were home. A day later than planned, was still sooner than we would have been if we'd stuck with the rebook flight. Unpacked and road wired me, then didn't get to sleep for a while. Kim had already called in the work for Monday, but I went in. And thus ends the boat saga. Every boat I've been on has had its many moments of awesome, but the overall for me this year is going to be hard to top, because a year ago, I didn't know if I'd be alive, let alone able to boat again. Up next, people keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah. <laughs>